This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And today, he's going to be reacting to the game we receive the most requests for. Seriously, a lot of you asked for this. It's Hunt Showdown. This version, with the funky chain belt feed, is, I think, based on this. If there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, do let us know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe for more videos exactly like this. And if you want to help out the Royal Armies Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. What was that? So I'm getting the sense that this is not a realistic take on the Western genre. It is not a game that I uh, had even seen prior to uh, being asked about it for this. So this is pretty much new to me. But where I am familiar and comfortable is with the single action army Colt revolver. Guessing from the state of the thing and the lack of grips that there is a um, deterioration, repair, maintenance mechanic going on. More importantly, uh, apart from your 45 Colt rounds which would be quite handy this thing's got this what, what at first i thought was like a, uh, a skull smasher as they're sometimes called pommel on on the bottom of the grip which is not something that the cult came with but is something that you could fit weld on there or something if you wished what this appears to be is actually a very short knife and we're getting some um walking dead style head kills <laughs> using this incredibly short uh, obtusely angled blade I'm picking up the customization options here because I know the Colt 1872 revolver is in the game. This is a reproduction. We don't have one in the collection in the Royal Armouries, sadly. This version with the weird funky chain belt feed is I think based on this. This is the Treby chain gun. It works much like a single action revolver Cocking it revolves not a cylinder, but a, a, a chain of uh, chambers to the next position. Pulling the trigger, I will ease it down. Fires off that chamber. Cock it again to revolve to the next one. So pretty much like the game. This is uh, percussion though, so you'd have to muzzle load each of these chambers. Um, whereas what we see there is slightly fudged reload animation where the empty case is somehow pulled out without using the ejector. So they're just doing it manually and they're just kind of glossing over how that happens, which is fair enough. The 1872 Colt would be interesting enough because they they rarely show up in Western fiction, but to, to sort of combine it with the tree bee, or hey, maybe they've come up with that idea on their own, I don't know. But um, we certainly have a, a, a Victorian equivalent of that in the collection, which is good. I like that. If it wasn't for the fact you only get one shot, that's almost like an ideal zombie weapon. That's a 12 gauge, single barrel, break open shotgun. They were very common in the Old West. That looked like it might be an Ivor Johnson or a Stevens or something. And it's obviously been modified with a, a quite a cool hatchet attachment and is, is drastically cut down. If this is like 1880s and the cartridges are black powder, you would want a uh, smokeless powder loaded cartridge, basically, because if you're firing black powder out of that shorter barrel, it's going to be pretty weak. The burnt rate of black powder is, is different and wouldn't be hugely effective. So we'll have to assume that those are nitro cartridges. Um, incidentally, the cartridges look quite authentic. There's a tendency in games to just stick modern looking cartridges, which don't look totally out of place, but those with the different color and the detail of the head stamp that actually looked like some they dug out some um late 19th century early 20th century maybe cartridges to model there that's a, a bit of a wacky choice there for old west america i'm not quite sure um, it's, there's probably some law or story reason why there's a russian service revolver from the end of the 19th century 1895 model the gantt revolver 
as to why that's in the game. Interesting because it's got the um, Bramit device or a version of it. It's actually not just a suppressor, it's got a um, sort of sabo in, in a modified form of the cartridge that stops all the gas from escaping. That's why it's not huge and sticking off the end of the gun is because it's it traps the gas as the bullet leaves the barrel and then as you revolve to the next chamber releases that trapped wind as it were. So not actually a conventional silencer. As to whether it'd be quite as quiet as that, I don't think anybody knows for sure because I've not seen that version of the device ever. And I've not seen it, seen it or heard of it being tested. There's no reason to think it wouldn't be very quiet based on how it works, but whether it would be quite as quiet as that, can't say. Um, this this has confused me greatly, this bizarre contraption, because it, it is very familiar. It looks like uh, Joseph Huot's conversion of the Russ rifle. It's got all the features of that conversion, but it is also definitely based on a Mosin, a Russian Mosin rifle, which doesn't make any sense because the Huot, because it's a conversion of the Ross, the Ross is a straight pull design. So you just have to make the bolt get pulled to the rear and then push forward again to chamber around. Can't just do that to a, to a Mosin, which is a turn bolt. You have to lift up the bolt quite drastically um, and then push it or pull it to the rear. You could probably do it, but it would need a huge machine cam plate like some of the uh, Enfield conversions that turn rearward movement of a piston into upward and rearward movement of a turn bolt. I know I'm overanalyzing this, but that's kind of my job. An iconic but not super common Western pistol is the Lamat. Very interesting because of, well, not only nine shots in the cylinder, which is uncommon for a revolver, but also a 20 gauge shotgun second barrel under the, under the main barrel. The video game version in this case is quite different. They've based it on a real version, which is as far as I know, it was built for the TV. So if you've, if you've seen the Westworld TV show, you've seen a ver this version of the gun. This is a percussion muzzle loader. So you'd have to stoke up nine chambers and the shotgun barrel with a, with a wad and some shot ahead of time. And then in a realistic fighting situation, that's your 10 shots. You don't get to reload it. In the 1870s, we see older designs like this, cartridge converted. That didn't happen with the Lamat, as far as I know. But there is this movie magic version that's in Westworld where you have to take the gun apart. It increases loading speed a bit doesn't allow you to reload it like we see in the game. What they've done is take it another step for, uh, further and completely redesign the gun. So that instead of the front barrel assembly coming off, it pivots downwards. That would not work because there is no way to latch this cylinder shut, which is critical. If you don't have a top strap, you need some way of latching the cylinder shut that is super strong. So they fudged it, which is fine. I don't. You can't put a percussion firearm in a game like this without making it uber powerful to compensate so they haven't so that's fair enough pause bit of a curious fighting pistol for any situation actually but um what we've just seen is a version of the C Sharks patent Derringer. It does work pretty much as seen. So you put it on half cock, press a catch under the barrel, which you, which you don't see really in the game, slide the barrel unit forwards, and then you, you put your little cartridges in there. You're not going to get much powder in that case. So the power is going to be quite low. Uh, so you're relying purely on the bullet diameter to do the damage. And from what I saw in the clip there, this thing seems to be a bit of a beast. Um, so I'd say it's probably too powerful for what it is. Hey, maybe it's charmed or something. I don't know. It's a nice bit of variety. And these are quite nice antiques.
The old reliable sharps rifle, very common in the West for things like buffalo hunting. And uh, we do see scoped versions like that. You definitely wouldn't want to be clobbering anything with any scoped rifle, to be fair, but especially not a something of that vintage. Um, the slightest knock could easily put that out of zero and suddenly you're missing your single shot. You've only got one shot with this design, of course. The other thing I notice about it is the hammer. Something very strange going on with the hammer. With the sharps, the percussion sharps, you had to half cock before you open the lever and do your thing because you needed to be able to cap the, the nipple. The metallic cartridge version, which is what we see here, there's no need to be fiddling with the hammer at all. So whereas the, the, the reload animation has has the character sort of semi cock it, open the lever, put the cartridge in, and then sort of this sort of gets decocked at one point and then cocked again before firing. You don't need to do any of that. You just drop the lever, cartridge in, lever up, cock it, fire it. Pausing. Variety of shotguns is good. We've also got the Spencer 1882, which is a relatively early, in fact, an importantly early pump action, slide action shotgun. It's got a, an unusual action by modern standards that, that flips up the, out of the top of the gun, as you see there. The Incidentally, if people are wondering, the what looks like a second trigger in the trigger guard is, is the action bar lock, uh, which is something that's on modern pump action guns as well, although you're not aware of it in fiction because the gun is never empty. So. Um, but that's what that's what locks the gun shut. I suppose a, a word on the fictional names of, the, of all the guns in the game, uh, because that one's visible on the top of the the receiver. Having having looked it up, I've I realised that all the names are what I would normally call legally different. But in most cases, there's no one around that would sue you for <laughs> for calling this suspenser. I don't think. I'm not going to get into the legal side of it. I'm not a lawyer. There's definitely a stylistic choice to fictionalize the companies in the game. And I don't know why that's the case necessarily. This is actually a really good addition to a game like this. If you if you were having to hunt supernatural creatures in a late 19th century time period, you would want something like a big game rifle, and that's what that's what this is. And to get through a thick skull like that, you need some serious power. So this is um, apparently a 600 Nitro, which 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 is 600 Nitro Express, which is one of the cartridges developed by the company uh, Jeffries in the late 19th century. The word Nitro refers to nitro powders or smokeless propellants which are obviously uh, more effective more efficient cleaner burning would was almost like a hybrid so a giant bottle bottle shaped and sized cartridge with a round nose bullet using nitro powder to propel it to decent velocities high velocities so would work nicely on these creatures If you'd like to donate to the Royal Armouries Museum, we have links in the description. I also have a book coming out fairly shortly on British bullpup firearms. So um, head over to the Headstamp Publishing website if you'd like to uh, pick up a copy of that. Thanks, guys.